are vital for successful democracies. Corporate money must be taken out of politics. We demand all politicians to sign the No Fossil Fuel Money Pledge. We demand citizens of the United States must we demand, excuse me, we demand Citizens United must be overturned and super PACs be abolished. <laughs> Corporate funding and donations from millionaires and billionaires must be replaced with public funding of elections in addition to small do dollar donations. <laughs> to ensure that every voter counts, we must restore the Voting Rights Act, secure automatic registration for every citizen above and re-enfranchise those convicted of felonies. Our action item from this demand is that we lower the voting age to 16. Next, we have an amazing woman named Leilani. She's here with the Anak Bayan of San Francisco. She's an environmental educator, and she's going to come and speak about a few important things. Can we get a round of applause for her, you guys? Leilani Manuda. I'm a San Francisco native born and raised. Uh, um, like I said, I'm an environmental educator. I'm here with Anakbaya in San Francisco and San Francisco Coalition for Human Rights um, in the Philippines. Um, and give me a moment. I'm trying to mentally shorten this because I want to make sure that the rest of the speakers have time that y'all don't need to hear all the amazing people that we have coming on stage today. Um, so again, thank you. It's beautiful to see all these faces, and truly, I cried getting off, like getting out of my car, like seeing everyone walking out today. Um, and what I want to start with is, we're fighting against murder in the name of profit. That's what we're fighting today, y'all. Um, according to Global Witness, an average of three environmental activists across the world were killed per week in 2018. Wow. That's 164 people killed, and that does not even count the people that have been criminalized and disappeared. Um, excuse me. <laughs> so, the reason I'm here today is because I am in solidarity both with the things that are happening here in my home, the displacement of people that are here in San Francisco, in the Bay Area, the displacement of indigenous people from their lands throughout history, the, the displacement of people in the Philippines who are being taken away from their lands because of mining corporations, because of oil, because of all of these different things that are put that are pushing out our people for the sake of resource and profit. But who benefits from that resource and profit? Not us, not our people that live and have stewarded these lands, that have taken care of these lands, that have been here for years, not us. And today we change that. Today and from here on out we change that. Environmental justice runs deeper than our personal decisions to be sustainable, but asking the question, who is most responsible for creating environmental harm? We as individuals may choose to stop consuming palm oil, but, but capitalist governments are still burning down biodiverse forests to create monoculture palm tree groves or cattle ranches. We as individuals could reduce our technology usage, but mining companies are still drilling into lands for the metals that create our phones and computers. Go ahead. Unless, rather than focusing, on ener on focusing our energy on only penalizing our peers for eating meat or using single-use plastics, which are something that we can reduce, yeah. we need to collectivize and we need to think bigger. Yeah. We will channel that energy into demanding that exploitative powers like the Brazilian government ban burning natural and indigenous lands. We must join movements that pressure our governments to divest from financial military aid in places like the Philippines, the largest recipient of physical U.S. military aid whose armed forces work in conjunction with foreign mining companies that harass and harm indigenous and provincial communities. Thank you. Before I say the rest of our demands in solidarity with this movement, I want to highlight a story. Brandon Lee is a Chinese-American activist from San Francisco who worked with the Ikugao Peasants Movement in the Cordilleras in the Philippines, where he was shot multiple times because of his work fighting alongside indigenous people to defend their land against military attacks, harassment, and corporations encroaching on mountains, forests, and rivers. Without the work of these collaborative folks, without the organizations that I was here today, without the work of these amazing young people, 
excuse me, without the work of all these amazing young people, San Francisco would not have felt pressure to pass a resolution to call a congressional hearing addressing the human rights issues in the Philippines and against environmental workers. Now the city of San Francisco stands with us to hold, to hold, excuse me, <laughs> to hold exploitative governments like the Ameri like the Armed Forces of the Philippines and the Philippine National Police accountable to their crimes. This is the kind of work that we can be doing across the world, not just in the Philippines, but here. We have environmental activists dying here. We have environmental activists dying across the world. So if we believe in a democracy where land belongs to its stewards, we demand that these lands must be protected. We demand that not only corporate money be taken out of politics, but also military aid must be taken out of our homelands. That fascists aiding destruction of our homes, like the current Filipino president Duterte, must be ousted. And the US administration must acknowledge climate crisis and take action. We the people, the youth, the students will act now. What do we want? When do we want it? some very special people from the San, Fran San Francisco Coalition for Human Rights in the Philippines coming up to speak, um, and they are incredible young people that will have amazing things to say to you all. Please give them a round of applause.